Hello and welcome to episode 103 of the Mouse Mates Knitting Podcast. Looks a little bit different today. The reason being I am filming on Monday the 26th of June. Typically I film on a Tuesday morning so the sun is just there and it's shining right in here so I've had to semi-close the blind so that you can actually see me and I'm still melting because it's very hot in here. I've shut the door to try and get some light reflected back. Nightmares. There's no Miss Poppy today. Um, Dad is still home on holiday. He goes back to work tomorrow. So I don't exist anymore. When Dad's home, I cease to exist. I am looking very, very toothpaste on my top honestly I look very scruffy my bra keeps poking out I do apologize as I say this is not the time that I would normally um, be recording but one of our neighbors is having some work done and so all day long there are pneumatic drills and angle grinders and I didn't think that would make for good recording ambience so I thought I'll do it this afternoon of course I hadn't dressed or did my hair or put on any makeup or anything ready to record because I wasn't expecting to so that's why I look even more dishevelled than usual and quite frankly I put earrings on to record and I had two different earrings in I have rectified that though because I did notice in time only because I brushed my teeth. Generally I avoid looking in mirrors so I wouldn't have noticed until I sat down to record or possibly not until I, I watched it back and I would have driven all the OCD people completely mad. Right then, you're probably expecting me to come on and tell you all about the lovely week we had last week while Dave was on holiday and all the days out we had I had planned, I'll tell you now because it didn't happen, but I'm hoping to possibly arrange it sometime in the future. I'd hoped to get down to um, see Ruth from Ruth Loves to Knit and Hannah from Hannah's Happy Space. I'd got that all planned. I was going to contact them the week before, get it all arranged. And then the day after you saw me last, so the Thursday, Poppy's brother Rocket came in and he was clearly not at all well. He's very nocturnal, he goes out in the evening, um, he'll go out sort of half five, six o'clock, comes in about half past nine because he knows that's the time Ewan gets home from work and he's Ewan's cat so he comes to see Ewan, gets a bit of fuss, has some dreamies, goes back out, we don't see him till the morning. Well he came in at about half past seven and took himself off to bed and you know it's like with your kids you know when you just look and you go something's not right there so the next morning um we got him to the vets and long story short he was very poorly he had to stay in overnight um by the saturday they really didn't know if he was going to make it or not uh, he was jaundiced he, he still is a little bit jaundiced i in case any of you are panicking he's okay fingers crossed he's okay um he stayed in having hydration through an iv and antibiotics and they took lots of blood and they looked at all his blood um, and they don't really know what was wrong they can't really tell what was wrong but the vet that was looking after him on saturday um spoke to a specialist and they were umming and ahhing whether to send him to this specialist diagnostic veterinary hospital but in the 24 hours that he'd been there the bill had already climbed to over a thousand pounds and quite honestly that was the limit of his insurance so there were a lot of phone calls lots of tears i honestly that saturday I just spent most of the day sobbing. I'm so glad Dave was home from work because 
I couldn't have coped. Oh, it's gone dark. That's weird. Um, that's completely thrown me. At some point during that day, somebody very kindly made a donation onto my Ko-fi account. And whoever that person was, it didn't really tell me. I think I commented and said, thank you. You have no idea how much I needed that today. I really did. It was honestly, it was a horrible day. So I did say I was going to make a long story short and I haven't really achieved that. We picked him up from the vet. The specialist vet said, look, try him on the maximum dose of antibiotics. This particular antibiotic, give him the maximum dose and half that dose again. So he's on a huge dose. And he's got to be on that for three weeks. And Saturday, he was a very angry cat that came home from the vets. Um, bearing in mind that he was kind of at death's door, he, Dave brought him in. I could hear him yowling from the car. He'd been trying to claw Dave through the bars of the cat carrier all the way home. Dave opened one of the catches on the, the door of the carrier and he bust it open and was out. Um, ran through the kitchen, snatched up a mouthful of food. He hadn't eaten all the time he was at the vets. We'd barricaded the cat flat, but he managed to get himself out the cat flat. And I had to like herd him back in from the garden. I've never seen such an angry cat in my life. But he calmed down and he was very loving for a few days um, and now he's back to his normal don't talk to me I'm a feral cat he's not a feral cat not at all he just thinks he is and he just completely ignores everybody unless he wants something generally tuna because the vet said oh you know we need to get him to eat give him all his favorite things so Dave went to Sainsbury's and came back with tuna and ham and cooked chicken and the first thing he ate was the tuna then he ate a little bit of ham then he had some gammon from our dinner and then really his appetite was back and he was just eating as normal so yes but he's had to have these antibiotics three times a day and so to be honest we were exhausted with all the um drama from Saturday and can't, couldn't really go out because we needed to give him his tablets in the middle of the day so it wasn't a particularly rest, restful week is where I'm going with that so yeah sorry if you were hoping for me to come bouncing back or fully rejuvenated and having had a lovely week I went to Tesco's that might not seem like a big thing. I've not been to Tesco since before the pandemic and they've had a refit since then. And I've been saying for ages, I really want to go and have a look around the new Tesco's. Not that it's new, but the newly revamped Tesco's. So yeah, that's the only outing I had last week, which wasn't desperately exciting. Never mind. As I said to the vet, when you take on a pet, it's a bit like when you decide to have children they didn't ask for you you asked for them so they're kind of your responsibility whether you like it or not he doesn't like it much he does take his tablets very very well um yeah so that's enough cat update we're nearly 10 minutes in and i've not talked about knitting at all the upside of not being able to go out anywhere and do anything. I hope this isn't as dark for you as it is for me. I can't really see the screen very well, but it does seem to be quite dark. I wonder if I turn it around. Nope, still the same. Oh, now you can see what you're not supposed to see yet. I've got some knitting things to show you. Then towards the end, I'm gonna do the shop updatey bit. Let me turn you back. You've had a sneak peek. Right, the up did I say this already? The upside of not being able to go out was that I've had not quite as much knitting time as normal, but more than I thought I was going to get. So, I'm going to start by showing you, this is my monthly triangulum update. So, 
I know some of you it makes you feel a bit weird because of the 2D, 3D thing. So this is your warning to look away and I will tell you when it is gone. I fished it back out on the 22nd of May and I wanted to get back into the doing the a triangle a day, which is what I'd meant to do last year, but got bored with it in May and it hadn't touched it till this May. So my original plan was to do a triangle a day for a whole year and then probably do the tidying up around the sides and what have you, the edging. So I have managed so far to do a triangle every day. I'm about to hold it up if you haven't looked away. Now is your chance. Since you last saw it, I've added 39 triangles. So this is it so far. I'm hoping you can see this because I can't see anything now. All I can see is the other side of the blanket. I think, which ones was I doing when I saw you? These, I think. So there's been two of these. I think I'd done just one triangle and if I remember rightly, I'd gone at it without reading the instructions and it had taken me two hours. So there's two of these, because I do one on one side and then one opposite it. Um, it's hard to remember which ones I've done. This is a new one. There's two of these. So when I say two of these, I mean two of the whole six, you know, the whole hexagon. There's two hexagons. Um, there must be more than that if I've done 39, mustn't there? I think it was that one. Was it that one? No, I don't think so. I can't remember what the new ones were. For next month, I'll put a, a stitch marker on so I can remember and show you. But I've just started the next colours and I've done those two. So although they look part of this hexagon, they're not. There's that one and there's that one. And this is the start of a new one that will poke out over the top. That one's new. Did I show you that one? I don't remember. I'll try and do better next month. So it is growing now. Um, I didn't think to add up how many I had all together. I think I think I picked it up on the 20th of May. I can't remember. And I'm not good enough at maths to work out how many that was that I did last year to add on to how many I've done this year. But you will have seen, there are quite a lot. It's fairly large now, but it's coming out. I don't know if you can tell, it's kind of long and narrow. which I don't know whether to kind of go with that because then it will be blanket shaped or whether my original vision of it was that it would be a giant hexagony type shape because I started with the one in the middle and then worked around it. I don't know. I'll see what happens. So let me put this away. Right, that's gone. You may now look again. So I've been doing that every morning for an hour. I've put a, a triangle on there. I'm wondering now, because obviously Saturday is the 1st of July and I need to cast on my July socks for the year of the sock. So with my new rotor, I don't know quite how I'm going to work those in. But I think what I might do is possibly an hour in the morning of triangulum and then another hour during the day of sock. An hour a day should be enough to get them finished by the end of July, shouldn't they? Shouldn't it, rather? Because I can always do shorties again. We'll see. 
Right, the other thing that I wanted to show you, I've done some work on thanks to my new kind of bingo system of working out what am I going to work on. If you missed it last episode, I've got a, a plastic tub and it's full of pieces of paper that I've written each project on. All the ordinary projects are written on a yellow piece of paper. Blankets are written on an orange piece of paper, apart from the triangular. And one day a week I pull out an orange one, usually a Saturday or a Sunday, and I'll work on a blanket that day. Every other day of the week I pull out a yellow one, and that's the project I'll work on for that day. And that's worked really well so far. How long have I been doing that? A fortnight, I think? Yeah. And there's only one project that's not come out yet, so I know what I'm going to be working on tomorrow. Um, every other day it's been a surprise, but I know that's the only one that's left, so. Right, this went into the jar. This wasn't from the cast on party, this was a previous project, and it got a bit neglected. And so I thought, you know what, I'm going to stick it in the jar and then it'll get some work on it. So this is the Sonnenstunden tea by Evgenia Dupilly, I think. Don't look at my nails, they're awful. Um, pardon me. And this is my blue um, version, which I'm today knitting with Cascade Heritage. Cascade Heritage Superwash Merino and Nylon and it is colour number 5745 which is Riviera Heather. So I've done a little bit more work. Oh. Look there's a join coming up, that's annoying. That's the second one in this ball I think and that's pretty annoying. Um, where are we? I'm sure I put... Yes, I did. So, last time you saw it, it was where that little marker is there. So, bearing in mind I worked on this just for the one day, I've done quite a lot. It's still on... I say it's on too short a needle. It's only on too short a needle for the purposes of showing you. For the purposes of working on it, it's a, a nice size take that off and it might be a little bit easier. Don't fall off. Oh hell, let's just take you off before you fall off. Because it's going to fall off. We all know that. So, what you have is this moss stitch running down each raglan seam. And that will also run down the side of the sweater. I've shown this to you loads of times. Um, I'm knitting this colour, which is, I don't know how that's coming out on your screen, on mine. It looks really sort of like a cobalt blue. It's a much more, I don't know if you can see if I hold it close. Can you see it's got like a greeny fibre mixed in with the blue? So it's a lot more green in real life. I've got two versions of this on the go at the moment. This one and a pink one that I'm knitting in my own hand dyed that I reclaimed from the summer sorrel tea that I fell out with. So I've been working on that one and not on this one because I thought, well, this is more autumnal. But then really, I need to knit it now, so I've got it for the autumn, don't I? Um, I just love this colour. I love it so much. It's very nearly the colour of my oldest son Peter's eyes. They're a bit more grey than that. Right. I'm not showing you everything I've worked on, because obviously... That would be quite a lot of things because I've worked on something different every day the whole time since I saw you last. 
So I'm just going to show you the things that I feel have got a bit of, what's the word I'm looking for? Worthwhile progress? No, that's not right, is it? What is this bit of hair? <sighs> I'm in one of those moods today. Do you ever have those days where all your clothes prickle you and your head feels uncomfortable on your head? It's been so humid. Oh no, I was swore I wasn't going to moan about the weather today because that's all we all, all we British podcasters do is moan about the weather. But it's been really hot and I don't mind the hot so much because you can get out of it by just staying indoors and having all the doors and windows open and getting a breeze through. But the humidity is just horrible. It was 75% on Saturday and I was dying yarn over hot steamy pans. I don't think I've cooled down since quite frankly. Right, the next thing I want to show you has become something that I feel a little bit sad about now. I'll explain why in a minute. Um, it's a shawl. It's a Stephen West shawl and it's not on my Stephen West marathon list. Which, by the way, is stuck to the, the like the side panel of my desk there, and I can't read it anymore because the sun's bleached it already. A bit annoying. This is the fragmentation shawl, which didn't exist when I made the list, but I have subsequently started it, along with a couple of other things that weren't on the list. But let's not talk about that. Um, while we're on the subject of the list and changing the subject slightly, on Saturday I should be casting on my second slip extravaganza. I've got the yarn all caked up for it. It's looking at me from over there. It is so pretty. Oh. But I don't think I'm going to because I've already got this one and the painting bricks shawl. So I think what I might do is save the slip extravaganza for let me see if I can make out on my list that should be for July and August and then in September I was going to do the Pagona but I've already done the Pagona so I swapped it with the slumber shawl which I've knit before and I know knits up quite quickly so I might do the slumber shawl and then do the slip extravaganza instead of the M cow. I'm still a bit wary about the M cow. But I had kind of had it in my the back of my mind that I could do do the ones that I'd got on my list and then do the M cow, which we know should just take us a month. And then after the MCAL, I could do a Christmas Callaway slip extravaganza. I have many ideas. My mum used to have a phrase for when you wanted too much to, you know, on your plate, the more that you could eat. And she used to say, a wondrous bird is the pelican. Its beak holds more than its belly can. And I think... I have kind of transposed that onto my knitting aspirations. <sighs> I just need to learn either to go without sleep or how to knit whilst asleep. Anyway, there's been a fair amount of work on the fragmentation. You might have forgotten I was talking about that. It was so long ago. So last time you saw it, I was there where that little marker is there and since then I've done all of that so it it's difficult to, to handle that's the right bit yeah it's knitting sections and they 
go quite quickly. I've started the next section as you can see and then it was time to go to bed and so I'm just waiting for it to come out the jar again. What I'm doing is I'm weaving Stephen in that was good grammar as I go and then when I finish each repeat of colours there's seven colours I go back in and I just secure the ends I can't just chop them off I just can't so you can see these ones they've been woven stevened in um, so when I finish this lot of seven I will just go back in and just wiggle the ends back through just to secure them so that's the fragmentation, which I am knitting in. Mostly my own hand dyed. The yellow there, that was the March Year of Yarn colourway. This one is after the rain. This one was some green that I was playing about with and I can't remember. I don't think it had a name. This one, I don't know if you can see, is Peach Parfait. This one again playing around didn't have a name this one bottle green and then we're back to the March colourway but this one here this one in the middle was from the wool shed and I don't know if you've seen there was some very very sad news from the wool shed over the weekend and now I almost feel like I should pull it out and save it for something really special but before I started this shawl I'd already saved it for something special for so long when did I get it? it wasn't last year I think I got it September or October 2021 so I'd saved it for quite a long time and maybe it's better that I use it there's a bigger section, I don't know if you can see that one better. Maybe it's better if I use it and it goes into something that I'm going to love and I'm going to use rather than just sits in a box. So that's why I'm feeling a bit sad about this one now. If you haven't heard the news, I don't really want to say too much because it's not my, my story to tell. But it was a shock and quite upsetting, so... Yeah, let's move that while I think about it. So, that's those two projects. I have a couple more to show you. This one, oh, trying to prevent an avalanche. This one is from the cast on party. Put that back in there before I forget where it goes. Um, the fragmentation was also pre-cast on party but this one I did cast on on the 10th sorry for all the crinkling and the rustling I wasn't very prepared but then when am I ever I was going to blame the fact that it's not the right time to record but let's face it I'm never properly prepared so why lie this is Salt Marsh Cove by Fogbound Knits and I'm enjoying knitting this very much. I did have a bit of a wobble about the yarn again. The yarn I'm using is Stylecraft Highland Heathers DK. Hoping you can see that. It's looking very dark and grey on my screen. That doesn't make a lot of difference really. Here we go. This is the traditional fiddling with the blind trying to improve the light section of the podcast. The sun's gone in again now. Is that better? I can't actually tell because now I can't see anything. Anyway. It's kind of a pale pink with 
more peachy, purpley, grey undertones. It's a mould yarn. I don't know why I persist in trying to show you. You can't see the colour. I bought it a while ago and as I said in the last episode, I didn't use it because I felt it was a bit close to my skin tone and people might think I was naked. And I've since decided that if they think I'm naked, well, good luck to them. When you saw it last, I had done that much, a vast amount, because I'd, all I'd done was cast it on and then work on it for an hour and then move on to the next thing because cast on party. So I've now done a little bit more. This has been a very enjoyable knit. It's a raglan increase, which you can now see a bit of. It's a different increase to one that I've done before and if I remember to do it, I don't have to keep picking back to do it. It's really enjoyable and it's making quite a neat little increase. It doesn't look as neat there as it, it is. I did have a bit of a problem though. I don't know if you can see. Can you see it looks a little bit funky there? I tend to knit, if I'm just knitting plain stocking stitch, I'll knit and I'll watch the television or read a book or do whatever and my hands are just going until I feel something with my my left hand, something's changing, like I feel the, um, whatever this thing is called, stitch marker. Um, and then I look because I know I've got to do something. And I was looking at this, I'd been knitting away on it, and I looked and I thought, something's not right there. And so I had a good look, and what I'd done was I'd split a stitch, and then on the next row I'd knit both halves, 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 both bits of the stitch. And I thought, well, I can't, can't leave that, can I? So... I added back both stitches. One stitch should have been there. So I just picked that one back up. And the other half that shouldn't have been there, I just left. But it left me with a ladder about half an inch, uh, about a bit less than a centimetre and a half wide. So I wasn't going to pull it back and what I did was I spent about half an hour with a spare needle just easing all the stitches either side for about eight rows until I'd used up all the spare yarn from the ladder so I'm hoping because obviously of course where else would it be right in the front in the middle of the neck Because why would you make a mistake on the back where it's, you're not going to notice it? No, got to be right in the middle of the front. I'm hoping it will block out. I think it probably will. Um, this is 100% acrylic. What I generally do when I knit with acrylic is I will just chuck it in the washing machine on its own and it gets agitated about. And when it comes out, all the stitches have kind of evened themselves out. And then I just lay it flat without pinning it unless it needs it. I think, mind you, the Son and Stunden's not acrylic, it's wool. So forget what I was going to say then. I was going to say that I think that those um, moss stitch panels are going to need just encouraging to lie flat. So I'm hoping it will just, it'll come out in the wash, as they say. Yeah, so there's that. That is the Salt Marsh Cove 
my fog bandits. I did tell you that, didn't I? I am all over the place. Don't know whether I'm coming or going. Right, I'm going to move this stitch marker. I forgot to move the one on the Sonnenstunden. Thank you once again to whoever it was that told me that it, it's a Stunden. Um, I'll try and remember and do that before I put everything away again. Right, one last thing to show you. And this, I don't show you very often. And you probably won't see it again till the end of December. Sorry, I didn't need to zip that up really, did I? Oh, and I've left the pattern out. This, and I do not have the pattern to hand. But all the patterns are linked below. This is the shortest day shawl. By somebody whose name I cannot remember. I'm running through names in my brain and none of them sound right, so I'm not going to say anything. It'll be linked below. The purpose of this is to give myself a record of all the Year of Yarn colourways for 2023. I have ideas for 2024, but we're not going to talk about those yet. So I'm doing a section. This pattern is designed for advents. I fiddle about with the number of rows. And so because there were going to be 13 Year of Yarn colourways, now there are 12. And so it's going to be a little bit narrower than it should be. Who's going to know? So we have January, February. March, April, May, June, and I have just put in, so that I can use the rest of the yarn for my socks, July's. We'll get a better look at that in a minute. I hope. I'm hoping the light's going to cooperate. It's obviously knitting the round. It's twice that, twice that long. Um, you knit it in the round and then, I don't know if you can see, I've got two markers there. When it's finished, I will stick up the middle of this panel between the two markers and then the, pull it back to where there's a different stitch, tie the, the ends and then it's got a fringe either end. So I am a little bit anxious about the steaking, but how badly can it go? Let's face it, when knitting pulls down, it goes down not along, doesn't it? So what harm can it come to? If the worst comes to the worst and I'm really feeling chicken, I'll just do like a month at a time, cut it, tie it off, cut the next one, tie it off. So yeah, that's what we have so far. That is seven months. And as I say, you probably won't see this again until probably the first one in January or the last one in December. Don't know quite what I'm doing over Christmas this year. Podcast wise, it's a bit early to be thinking about that. So that's all the knitting I have to show you. I need to find a bigger bag for this. It's been living in this one, which is an Amelia X Joy bag that I was given for Christmas by Amanda from Little Lycac. But it's got a bit big now for living in there, especially when it's got some yarn attached. I need to find another one. So that is all the knitting that I wanted to show you. We are already at 40 minutes and I've got the shop update to do yet. Oh my goodness. Okay, before I go on to the shop update, I want to show you what I've treated myself to. The lovely Diane from Utree Yarn Craft had a shop update a couple of weeks ago. And I'd seen the yarn and the bags and what have you on Instagram and I'd seen this yarn. And I loved it so much. And I looked on her shops on Etsy. I will link it below. I looked on her shop and I couldn't find it. 
And I was like, oh, I missed it. But then I saw that there was a listing. I'm trying not to drop it on the floor. There was a listing for this bag, which came with this yarn. So, oh, now the colour's corrected itself again. I hope that's just my screen and not the recording. So I bought them both because you know I love these colours. And I love this yarn. And I messaged Diane and I said, oh, I thought I'd missed it. And she said, oh, there is some separately in the shop if you don't want the bag. And I was like, no, no, no. It's okay. I'll take the bag. It's all right. It's a good excuse to buy another bag, which I swore I wasn't going to do. And because Diane is just so, sorry, I've really wiggled you there. What is it? Caroline calls it sugared. I've sugared you. Sorry, Caroline. Um, she sent me this as well because I bought a bag from her not long ago. Oh, it's buried. Um, with rabbits on and I said about Peter and how when he was little everybody bought him Peter Rabbit stuff and I think he had about five Peter Rabbit books so she sent me this as well which I'm going to use as a sock bag and I'm going to put my July socks in it probably because Peter's birthday is in July there we go right that is everything other than the shop update. So if you're not interested in the shop update and you want to bail out now, get while the going's good. I'm just going to have a drink because I'm getting very full. I almost got through a whole podcast without getting tongue tied. Let me take a drink break. Okay. Shop update time. I'm praying for the light to behave itself. Excuse me, I drank that Coke far too quickly and now it's like all fizzing in me. There are quite a few yarns this this month because I got a bit carried away. I had some ideas and then the ideas what's the word? Generated more ideas and before I knew it there were quite a few yarns. So Let's start with the Year of Yarn colourway for July, which is very badly wound because I had a lot of yarns to wind and my wrist does not like winding yarns. Please don't look at how badly wound this is. I will do better for orders, I promise. So, if you've been around a while, you will possibly remember that I'm using Denise's Year of the Sock prompts for most of the Year of Yarn colourways through the year. That was a lot of saying a year. July's prompt is Marvel or DC films and it was a tough choice. I'm not really a DC girl. I prefer Marvel but I love all Marvel films and so I didn't want to go with um, like the Avengers or Thor because it was all going to be red and blue again and I did a lot of red and blue already so one of my very favourites is Black Panther and they have not long ago released the sequel to that, which is Wakanda Forever. So that's what this is. If I remember to, I will put the inspiration photo in. But I tried to get the golds, um, the burgundies. There's some black in there. There's some kind of olivey green. 
I'll try and remember and put the picture in. If it's not there, I forgot. I'm sorry. So that's the year of yarn colourway. The other thing that happens in July is Peter's birthday, as I mentioned, but he doesn't get his own yarn. Not this year. Sorry, Peter. Um, it is Lily's birthday. Lily. And it would have been her sister Rose's birthday, but we lost Rose in January. And Lily will be 12 this year. So this is Tabby Cats. They are, as you might be able to tell, Tabbies. Pardon me. Oh, gosh. Now, if you're looking for yarns that go together, that is a really rubbish side. There we go. These do go together quite well. It's a bit hard to see. I'm hoping you can see things better than I can. What I can see is rubbish. So that's two. That's Year of Yarn and Tabby Cats. Now I'm going to show you the one of a kind because once we get involved in the other stuff, this is a one of a kind that's going into the shop. Um, this will probably be in, all these yarns will probably be in the shop by the time you see this. So this is a one of a kind. There are still, no, don't pick up the bag, Mandy, it's crinkly. There are still these two, one of a kind, in the shop. And they do kind of, and this is completely accidental, make a sort of a fade. There's those. This is the new one. I think they're listed as one of a kind pink and blue, red and blue, red and purple, I think. I struggle to hold this information in my head. Then there is this one, which is new. This one is Garden Party. Again, very poorly skeined. Um, inspired really by a tea dress that I saw that I thought we normally have a strawberry tea at the church every year as a fundraising thing and I thought oh that would be nice to wear to the strawberry tea but then I forgot oh, I just don't do people anymore when I went to Tesco's I remembered why I don't do people anymore but I am proud to say that, no, I shouldn't say it. I was going to say, my death glare still frightens children. Oh, there were some truly horrible children. No, I'm not going to say it. No, be nice, Mandy. So that's garden party. Nobody's ever going to buy any yarn from me because I'm mean to children. I'm not actually mean to children. I just... <sighs> I started now so I might as well finish. We have a private school in town and not all but some of the children from there are so badly behaved and in Tesco's there was a girl in the private school uniform and she was just, I don't know how to describe it, completely she wasn't unaware of other people. She just didn't care that she was in their way and that she'd, you know, shove into you to get to what she wanted. It was just... Anyway, I gave her a glare and she moved away. I am horrible, really. This is Peach Melba. I don't know how well it's coming out. It does look quite nice. With garden party if I can get the right colours showing it's tricky when they're all skeined up looks quite nice with that peach melba then we get into I had an idea 
and I ran with it. Obviously, we've just had the summer solstice and this last weekend, it finished yesterday for me, it was Glastonbury Festival and I was inspired. This is Glastonbury. We already have a festival colourway in the shop, so this is just called Glastonbury. And I thought, oh, that's nice. And then it occurred to me that, sorry, I've got an itch. That I could do a kind of a fade thing. So this is Glastonbury. Then this is Sunset at the Henge. We're not very far from Stonehenge here. We're about an hour away. I love Stonehenge. I have a cross stitch of it that I did about 15 years ago that is in our living room. And then, told you I'd had an idea. This one, named by Dave, is Sunrise at Avebury. Now, I don't know if people outside of Britain or even people inside Britain will know about Avery but Avery is another stone circle but it's not on the same scale as Stonehenge it's um they're smaller stones and Dave and I went there years and years ago long before Ewan was born at about this time of year and we visited Avery and we walked around all the stones and then we went and visited some crop circles and bearing in mind, you know, crop circles, they're in fields out in the middle of nowhere. In the middle of the crop circle was the only place my mobile phone worked. Because I wanted to call my mum and tell her. She was less excited about it than I was. Probably suspected aliens were going to come and... What do they call it when you get taken by aliens? You know what I mean. Abducted, that's it. So that's Sunrise at Avebury. Now, these three, if I can hold them, go together rather nicely as a fade. So do these two and this one. And in fact, these two and this one which again is not cooperating or these three so I've managed this month to get back to what I was doing earlier in the year where I was trying to design yarns that worked together um, either contrasted together or complemented each other. I lost that for a couple of months because I went off on other tangents. And I'm not sure I've hit it quite yet for, maybe slightly, for August. I've got August yarns dyed up already because I'm going to be busy over the next few weeks with Advents and so on. So... Ah, and I've remembered another thing. This is a June colourway. This is June roses. And this, where's it gone? This looks really nice as well with these two. I can see, that way around, I can see I'm going to end up dying up loads of this for myself because I can see more teas and more shawls. I'm going to be sick of the sight of the colours before long. Anyway, those are all the yarns that are going into the shop. There is also 25% off the yarn bowls, leather yarn bowls. Um, Oh, it's gone out of things. Mine is full of stuff that is not yarn. It has my P 
bit of tubey grip to cover my wrist because it gets irritated by the feel of the wool and my leather mouse which holds all my stitch stoppers in there at the moment so it's first time you don't have to use it as a yarn doll um, this is because I tried to have a tidy up in here and you know when you try and tidy up and you actually end up making more mess and then you give up and put everything back where it was that's kind of what happened it was too hot I shouldn't have been doing it um, anything else shop wise to tell you I don't think so if you're watching this on Wednesday tomorrow night is the members only zoom um, 8 p.m. British summer time some of you are in other time zones you may have to work that out for yourself uh, if you are a member a mouse's mates member on Kofi you should have been given the details already if you're a member and I haven't remembered to send you them because let's face it we all know brain like a sieve just message me and I'll get you sorted out anything else I had to say don't think so yes there is I've also put on Kofi there is now a custom listing I've debated about doing this for a few weeks because I'm not entirely sure how it's going to work but I've put it up as a listing with the option to buy one two three four or five skeins so that you can order a fade or I don't know if you wanted all the same colour you would just order five or four or whatever you wanted of the same colour but if you want me to design something specially for you um, or you want it done as a fade that's the way to do it so the price is exactly the same as if you were buying the yarns um, from an ordinary listing but you do need to message me and let me know what you want to do so that I can tell you whether I can do that or whether we need to adjust it slightly maybe the colours you want aren't going to blend the way you want them to maybe you want speckled then faded and then stronger colour whatever if you message me, you can do that either via Kofi Messenger or you can email me at mousesmakes at gmail.com and we can discuss what you want to do, whether I can do that for you and then you can order whatever you want. I think that's the only thing that I have forgotten to tell you. So. As it is very nearly a whole hour, I'm just hoping there's enough room on my phone to store this. I'm going to go away and leave you alone now until next week where I will be back to harass you again. Um, until then, happy knitting and yeah, I'll see you next week. Bye guys. <laughs>